Dorsey for the citation. We will now ask Dr. McLuhan, the first graduate of the class of 1969, they will speak and give evidence to those who are to follow him very shortly on this platform. Dr. McLuhan. Your Excellency, Father Laver, a stripper takes off her clothes in order to put on her audience. Literally. It was Cecil B. DeMille, I think, who said a good movie begins with an earthquake and moves gradually toward a climax. I'm going to try to make my talk like that, cursed and brief. I'm only allowed 20 minutes. Look, anyway, there are a few... It's much more difficult to address friends than strangers. And there are some of my dearest friends here, including my wife. Where did that echo come from? <laughs> now, I want to uh, just give you a little rule for life that will enable you to get out of any type of hassle or confrontation, to use the popular word. Suppose somebody were in a classroom or in any public place to suddenly ask you, do you have any idea about the relevance of algorithms in the present town planning dispute? You would say, naturally I do. It is an unresolved parameter of Hertz law. Now don't ever forget that phrase. Because you would be amazed at the look that comes over the face of these brash people when you mention Hertz law. Hertz was the inventor of radio. Very few people know that. Hertz also invented a law which says the consequence of the image will be the image of the consequences. I will now illustrate Hertz's law from some everyday situations that will show you how important it is. For example, without white people, there would be no black people. There would just be people. The image of the consequences is the, con uh, the uh, consequence. The image of the image of the consequences. In the same way, without affluence, there cannot be poverty. You can have hardship. During the Depression, the word poverty was never mentioned. There was no affluence to give it meaning. Without affluence, there is no poverty. There's just hardship which everybody shares. Without learning, there is no ignorance. Without work, in the sense of jobs, there cannot be any unemployment. The artist has no job, and he's never unemployed. He's always using all his faculties flat out, and therefore he is always at leisure. When you were using all your faculties, you were totally at leisure. When you were using a tiny, specialized fragment of yourself adding up your income tax, you're working. Work consists in fragmenting your humanity into tiny, little bits. When you have fragmented work into jobs, then you have unemployment. But the farmer is never unemployed. The housewife who has 60 jobs is never unemployed. And she's always at leisure. always ready for a cup of tea, coffee, or a visit. And that's true of any integral being. So Hertz's law is, applies also to many, many areas that you may not have noticed, as for example, without public, there cannot be privacy. When Al Carpus came out of 32 years of imprisonment, he was asked a few weeks ago, what is the greatest wish you have in returning to civilian life? And he said, privacy. He had had 32 years of solitude. Without a public, there is no privacy. 
Robinson Crusoe never had any privacy. That is Hertz law. It applies to every area of ordinary daily life. 